e-governance uh, is one of the most powerful tools that we have for any part of the world, but I would say uh, in, in a way, especially for Africa, to achieve rapid, uh, sustainable, socially inclusive development. Uh, and that is, of course, uh, the topic of your meeting. I just want to make a few brief remarks about the broader context of Africa's economic development and then some uh, specific comments about the role of digital inclusion in that. I'm part of a project right now of the African Development Bank, which is looking at modalities or ways to achieve rapid economic growth in Africa between now and the year 2063, which of course is the 100th anniversary of African unity. And this study, which will come out uh, within the next uh, few months, probably at the African Union uh, summer session, shows that it's possible for Africa to achieve very high rates of economic growth on a consistent basis for the next 40 years. Uh, for me, uh, a, a benchmark <laughs> is China. China achieved for 40 years between 1980 and 2020 economic growth of between 7 and 10% per year per capita. And when you grow at 7% per year, the economy doubles every 10 years. If you grow at 10% per year, the economy doubles every seven years. Well, China did that for 40 years. And the result was that the Chinese economy grew by more than 30 times. China went from uh, being a poor, uh, low-income economy uh, with uh, a very high poverty rate to ending extreme poverty entirely by the year 2020 and becoming a high-income economy. I believe that Africa has the same prospects for the next 40 years and that those are realistic uh, and they should be, in fact, the targets of public policy and the uh, environment in which the private economy functions. Roughly today, Africa's GDP per capita in dollar terms uh, is on the order of around $2,000 per person in Sub-Saharan Africa. By 2063, it should be well over $30,000 per capita. And if the high end of the growth uh, interval is reached, forty dollars or $50,000 per capita at a minimum. This is, in other words, a very promising period for Africa's development. What does it depend on? All rapid economic development is based on high rates of investment, because after all, economic development is building the productive assets of the society. And there are three major categories of uh, those productive assets, the human capital, the infrastructure capital, and of course, the business capital. And all three are complementary with each other. Uh, human capital works effectively when it is combined with quality infrastructure, uh, and then it generates business development. Businesses flourish when the workforce is highly skilled, in other words, high human capital, and when there is the infrastructure, the power, uh, the digital connectivity, the road <coughs> transport, the rail transport, uh, the urban infrastructure to enable highly profitable business to take hold. So my view is that what governments in Africa and the African Union bringing together uh, the entire African economy in an integrated single market need to focus on is an integrated plan of high rates of investment in human capital, meaning especially education and health, in infrastructure, meaning especially universal access to digital services, to 
electricity and uh, effective uh, energy systems to transport systems, uh, both the road and rail and public transport, and of course, urban infrastructure, because all of Africa and all of the world will be highly urbanized by mid-century. Uh, and this means uh, social housing, <coughs> water and sanitation, uh, and of course, the network of public services that goes along with this. Our view in this African Development Bank study is that a high rate of public investment covering six main areas is the way to achieve this rapid development. And these six areas are the subjects of your conference. They are education for all with quality. They are healthcare with all. They are a, a green uh, power system. In other words, zero carbon uh, renewable energy, wind, solar, hydro, geothermal, uh, and others uh, in an industrial economy. They are precision agriculture and sustainable land use as the fourth area of investment. The urban and interurban infrastructure, meaning uh, cities that work well, and Kigali is a beautiful city and it's going to meet uh, that test, and the interurban uh, infrastructure, especially road and rail, which will be uh, extraordinarily important. Now, to achieve these high rates of uh, growth in these uh, areas, and the sixth is the digital uh, platform, I should say. So <laughs> education, health, energy, agriculture, urban and interurban, and uh, digital, to achieve these high rates of economic uh, of uh, investment uh, levels requires first national and regional planning. So there should be a high level of ambition. Government should be aiming and the African Union as a whole and regional or sub-regional uh, groupings in Africa should be aiming for growth of at least 7% per year on a consecutive basis. Second, smart systems. Uh, in which these investments uh, are undertaken. And here is where digital, of course, comes in. And the third is a financing structure and strategy that underpins the high rates of investment that are needed for the next 40 years. Let me say a word about the digital in this regard, since that is, after all, the theme of AfriGov. The digital technologies, I think it's uh, no uh, um, shock or unusual to say, are perhaps our most powerful tool in every area that investment is needed. Schools now to be effective, education to be effective, needs to be at least partly online. Students that are online, that have devices that are connected to schools, teachers that are connected with other teachers for training and for education, globally and nationally connected classrooms, strongly enable the quality of education. Similarly, in healthcare, uh, telemedicine, remote sensing, an integrated system of community health workers, uh, distance reading of uh, medical uh, imaging, <laughs> and a hundred other applications uh, are empowered by digital technologies. Of course, a smart energy system, uh, a green distributed energy system tapping renewable energy from multiple sources across many countries requires an absolutely smart grid, smart metering and smart management of a distributed power generation and distribution system. This can only be accomplished with a 5G system uh, that is backing up the, the physical infrastructure. <laughs> the business sector requires online payments, uh, online <laughs> uh, 
credit and financing, and of course the government sector uh, for all of government operations for <coughs> licensing, transfers, tax collections, uh, and so forth is dramatically empowered by an e-governance platform. So in my view, the fast growth scenario, which I think is not only uh, within reach, but absolutely the key for Africa's development strategy, depends on exactly the purpose of your conference, which is universal access to 5G and above digital services. And remarkably, not only are these platforms and this both physical and software infrastructure now within reach, it's in within, within reach at low cost. The improvements, the cycles of a generational improvement of digital connectivity are something that we've never experienced in any other technology in history. Uh, I was just in Shenzhen, China, a couple of weeks ago visiting Huawei, one of my favorite companies in the world. And I learned, which I was not fully aware of, that the 5G, which China had rolled out in China and which reaches almost all of China now, is now 10 times faster than it was in 2019 when 5G was first introduced. And the costs continue to come down. And so the notion of a, an economy-wide, Africa-wide uh, universe, universal access a digital system with platforms for all of the areas that you've identified and that I regard as the priorities, ed tech, ed tech health tech, fintech, uh, agri-tech, uh, civic tech, uh, e-mobility, uh, which are all featured in your conference, are all within reach. Now, there's a, a final issue, which is uh, extremely important. I don't have time to dwell on it, but let me mention it. To achieve high rates of investment requires high rates of saving. And high rates of saving for Africa will come from two sources, domestic resource mobilization and international financing. On the domestic resource mobilization, there are two areas of finance. There is the public finance, that is what the budget raises, and there is the market finance, that is tapping capital markets uh, in Africa, which will grow, I think, rapidly over time with higher uh, saving rates in the future as rapid economic growth takes hold. Africa will also need access to low-cost, long-term international finance as well. Indeed, many countries today are debt distressed, actually not because they have so much debt, but because the access to capital is so limited that even small amounts of debt finance prove to be burdensome or problematic when governments try to roll over their debts. So one major component of this high growth, high investment, digitally enabled uh, scenario to 2063 is greater access to long-term, low-cost, reliable financing. There's a lot to say about this, but I want to emphasize that this is a critical agenda for the G21 this year, for the IMF, for the World Bank, for uh, the BRICS countries. In other words, the question of global financial architecture to ensure that Africa and other developing regions have access to long-term, low-cost finance, at least on the same uh, quality and scale as the high-income countries, is a top priority. In a way, it's a still missing piece of the overall puzzle, but it's absolutely within reach. Africa right now pays penalty interest rates and 
is forced to borrow short term compared to the long term uh, needs of development. And so closing the financing gap, to my mind, is the last piece of the puzzle, if I could put it that way, to moving Africa from today's four to 5% growth to a seven to 10% growth framework. <clears throat> and during the African Union Summit uh, last month uh, in Addis, uh, during the upcoming uh, mid-year summit at the G20, at the IMF World Bank meetings, and in my work at the United Nations, this topic is front and center. So let me uh, stop there just to emphasize that I do believe we are on the threshold of very rapid growth. I believe Africa will be the fastest growing region in the world economy uh, throughout the 2030s. Uh, it will set the pace. It will essentially achieve over the next 40 years what China succeeded in achieving between 1980 and 2020. In order to do this, there will be rapid investment in human capital, physical infrastructure, and business across all of the sectors of the African economy. Africa needs to plan for this. It needs to act uh, really uh, as a union, uh, which is extraordinarily important. This cannot be accomplished 55 separate times by the 55 member states of the AU. It is a single project for a truly uh, true African union. And to underscore the obvious point, it will be digital platforms in all of these critical areas, in education, in healthcare, in energy, in mobility, in agriculture, in public services, that will be the tremendous boost for success. I know that this is the purpose of the conference. I want to express my full optimism and solidarity in this. Think big, be bold, uh, plan for rapid economic development, which serves the people of Africa. Uh, and I think we can look forward to an era of great success in sustainable development. So thank you very much for letting me make a few brief remarks. I uh, wish I could be with you in Kigali, but I'll see many of you face to face as soon as possible. Thank you for having me today.